I really wanted to hear more in terms of discerning the voice of God. Even as he was ministering, you could, you could tell that there are dimensions in as far as hearing the voice of God or discerning the voice of God is concerned. Well, before you even get to real time hearing the voice of God, I think there is a dimension where the simplest, I believe, is just understanding that whatever is taking place at any given point in time, it may be God communicating with you. But understanding that it is God communicating with you is also another fact. Because it is not all the time that we can read into events and hear the voice of God or discern the voice of God in those events. And then there's a second dimension where I feel you may hear God through the situations and events. You may hear God through the situations and events. And then you also can hear God real time. That's another dimension. We are now in the third dimension. And then you come to a point where you hear the voice of God. And then you hear by God. <laughs> so looking at all those things, it, 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 it seems a simple subject, but very complex. Extremely. Very complex because you look at just hearing or comprehending that this is God speaking. And then our father goes on to explain how God then deposits his voice or his word in places. <sighs> it was just something else. It was just something else. Because you look at it from another angle and you begin to realize how disobedience disqualifies man from the next word. Or lack of understanding. I won't want to call it disobedience sometimes. But inability to hear God at the first instruction, disqualifies you from the rest of the instruction. Is, the, is that not disobedience? <laughs> I would want to call it ignorance sometimes. <laughs> Maybe just to console your heart. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I really want to call it ignorance. But also you come to a point where you want to really understand the opportunity cost of that ignorance. And it's really amazing sometimes how we may be praying and yet God has already deposited his voice in a place that we were supposed to be, that we are not in. It's an extremely sensitive subject. Um, recalling how our father explained um, the dangers of discerning that God has spoken by the consequences of what has happened. Um, like you said, hearing the voice of God in real time and appreciating that it is Him and not waiting to see the results to then say, ah, oh, okay, so that was the Lord. Um, it, it's, it's a very sensitive subject. It is very deep. It's very vast, like you said. And now uh, we're looking forward um, this morning to hear more from our Father concerning, concerning this, this subject of, um, of discerning His voice. You know, Pastor Columba, as you're saying that, I think one of the trickiest things in our season, in our generation, is understanding or discerning a vessel through which God communicates with His people. Because you might jump into hearing God, but what is it that God uses? Who is it that God is using? I think that's a very good starting point because we may look into events, we may look into and ignore the simplest thing that is before us. And that's God speaking to us. And to then realize that it was God speaking to us. Like I said before, it won't be a nice thing. Mm. Mm. Yes, indeed, it's, it's easy to lose um, uh, communications that are coming from the Lord because you don't have your finger on His pulse. And like you're saying, finding that pulse and understanding where exactly it is, um, that's the first and I believe greatest step. And that's the reason why we're here. Um, 
because the Lord has been so gracious to us, um, allowing us to be found by this light. Um, and we believe um, that you're now ready uh, to receive ministration from, from our Father. We're so glad that this moment has been created by the Lord and we get to lean into the light of the Lord and be enriched this morning. Allow us to introduce our Father now. Greetings, our Father. The Lord bless you. We receive. And bless our viewers. We receive, Father. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much, Father. Father, your message last week, um, it communicated many messages. Um, the, the first one was helping us to understand how to see and hear where the Lord is speaking from, discerning the vessels that he's using. And the second area that came to our attention was what felt like a warning about the environment that we're in and the environments to come. Um, because Father, we, we are your children. We are on the internet. We, sometimes we come across very strange, uh, what, a, what would appear to be ministrations. And we, we're wondering, what is happening? What is this? So your message last week really equipped us um, to be able to discern what is of the Lord and what is not. Mm. And it's extremely helpful to us, Father, because we are, we are guarded against deception by the light that you brought last week. And so, Father, we're so thankful wow. for that marvelous message. Uh. Thank you, Father. I appreciate that. I really appreciate that. And um, of course, we are in a mode of celebration. And uh, we are thanking God for being God and for reigning over circumstances. And we are in a season where We are praying, our prayers are going towards uh, the Keta family. And we are also praying for the Kwekwe assembly. And we are believing God for more grace. That the hand of God continues to rest on his people and touch people's hearts. Because we all know that the man was a good man. He was a good man. He was a good man. We keep praying for all of you. Let's keep joining our hands. Let's keep on believing in God. And let's keep praying for nations. Let's not leave out even a single person. Let's keep praying for nations. Let's keep praying for nations. God will continue helping and rescuing his people. Yes. I can talk about that for the rest of the day, but you know, it is also important. We find ourselves in the word of God. We find God in his word. So let's get into God's word. And I'm so glad that you're here. I'm so glad that you uh, found um, this time to be very uh, important. And you chose this platform today. And I believe God is going to help you come out of whatever situation that you are in right now. So let us get into the word. Of course, I came here today not having much to share with you, but to ask you to 
Please keep on praying for nations. Let's keep on praying for nations. Let us keep on praying for uh, frontline workers. Let's not forget our good doctors. Let's not forget our nurses. Let's keep on praying for our law enforcement agents, police officers, the army. Let's keep on praying for governments. Let's not leave out anyone. Let's, let's keep praying for our leaders. They need our prayers. They need our prayers. We know they are doing the best they can to protect us and to make sure that we are safe. And we need to keep on praying for them that God keeps on giving them wisdom, which is very, very important. Very important. Sometimes you look at the way doctors have been working so tirelessly. You will never appreciate the work they're doing until you draw closer to their service and see those men and women are working so hard. It's beyond getting money out of it. It's a calling. The passion is is, 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 is beyond a career. It's so overwhelming. So we need to keep on thanking God for giving us such people. And uh, we are believing God for more grace and more blessings upon them. So we thank you so much, nurses and doctors. We thank you for the great job that you're doing. We thank you. We appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyway, I, 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 don't, I don't think I have anything today. <laughs> Rather than just coming to share the grace and we let the people go. Father, if there's an area where we have unbelief, is that area. <laughs> God will help you. We cannot believe that. <laughs> God will help you. <laughs> Father, if you could allow me to ask a question. <laughs> <laughs> Though we know you, you are always ready <laughs> at any moment. All right. Uh, briefly, maybe. <laughs> Thank you, Father. All right. Um, Father, for many of us that have been following you for a long time, we've come to understand that the bedrock of your ministry is life. Um, it's your focus in what you teach. It's your focus in how you minister. And we've also seen that one of the foundational pillars to that bedrock is the area of developing a good godly character. Father, is an area that you've taught for years. Um, you have been so open that you're not excitable by seeing gifts being demonstrated and um, an individual seeming to be really operating in the, in the gifts of the Spirit. But you've always emphasized the area of character. And last week, you opened our eyes from the book of Exodus, chapter 3, about how uh, Moses had the encounter the burning bush yeah, yeah, yeah. and the greatness of the sight was not in the fact that the fire was uh, just burning mm. but the greatness was in that though the fire was burning it was not consuming the bush mm. and you pointed out by revelation to us which, which we love. You're so insightful. <laughs> that inspiration, we love it. I admire it. <laughs> I want it. <laughs> Father, you said, the fire did not consume the bush. And looking at ministers as they minister, sometimes that fire of God that amazes people when they watch them demonstrating the gifts of the Spirit and ministering to people. That fire is contaminated when the leaves of the bush are burned and 
areas of weakness and flaws in their characters yes. begins to manifest as they minister. Mm. And Father, we heard that in a way that we've never heard the issue of character being emphasized and its importance being described before by you, Father. Mm. Father, we felt like we don't even know what character is to begin with. Um, we don't know what it means to have a godly character. Mm. And so, Father, which, which begs us to ask the question, Father, really what is character? And how can we develop a godly character? Father, we want to be effective. Yeah. You've told us that we are all ministers, uh, whether I'm a doctor, I'm an engineer, uh, I'm a minister of the word on the pulpit and I'm holding a microphone. Yeah. We are ministers. But you made us to understand that in our ministering, a lot of corruption has taken place because there are weaknesses in us, weaknesses in us, Father, that manifest character issues that contaminate the brilliance of that burning fire. So how do we develop character, Father? How, how do we do that? It's a cry, Father. We want to be effective. We want to be relevant. We want to be excellent. <laughs> That's a very critical topic. I thank God that at least you managed to perceive that the area is so necessary, necessary to a point to where you can't do, you can't survive without this character. In as much as I, I didn't want to be here for, for too long, but you know, the issue of character is very important. You know, let me, let me put it this way. You see that most people, what makes them think or even believe that they are ready for ministry is the availability of the message and not the readiness of the messenger, the preparedness of the messenger. It takes time even for God to develop and to bring about a qualified messenger than it is for God to deliver to the messenger a message. It doesn't take God time to hand over a message to you. But the preparation of the messenger, where the messenger is now qualified for the message that he carries to the people. That is where now character comes in. I remember some few months ago, I was talking to the man of God, uh, Pastor Matthew Shaiju, you know him. The reason why I was talking to him, it was because of what I had had. when he was speaking, having listened to him over years, a 
knowing who he is or in fact who he was. And getting to listen to him now, I felt there was a need for me to make an announcement to him that, you know, why is it that when I'm listening to you now, as your minister, it is as though I'm hearing God speak. <laughs> you see? You see? <laughs> you know, it's one thing hearing that from someone who has never heard God speak. I've interacted with God's voice on several occasions. You know, when you've been hearing God and hearing God is all that you've been doing. And, and then when you listen to someone and then you're not finding the difference I picked my phone, I said, no. God has done a work. It is not just in the message. There is something happening to the messenger. Mm. And blessed are the people around you. Because now they get to hear God speak. Every time you open your mouth. Why is it that it is as though I'm hearing God? How? Oh, wow. <laughs> I do. I do. Something wow. So, you know, <laughs> when God develops a man, when God builds you up, when it is God who has constructed you, Then he gives you the message that you now qualify to carry. When you speak, it is as though pieces of God are coming out of your mouth. It's not just the message that is ahead. People hear God. People hear God. And from that moment, I knew because while I was listening to him, I received a confirmation from the Lord that you know, blessed are the people that take time to listen to him when he's speaking because mm. that's not his message, that's not his word. Mm. You know, as for me, when it is God speaking, I know it's this is God. I don't. I can't even come here and talk about that. If, uh, if I'm, if I'm yet to verify that, but mm. I don't. I don't play those jokes. You know, no, I don't play those jokes. Mm. Now I would like to let you know those of you that are close to him. Mm. <laughs> you are blessed to be hearing. God's voice from a man whose character has been developed. It is tailor-made 
before he delivers the message, God made sure that the man was delivered first. It's, it's, it's not, I, let, let me repeat this aspect. Most people think that they are ready for ministry. Just because they have a message that is ready to be delivered. It's not hard for God to hand over to you a message. It takes God more, much more, to develop a man. That's the reason I have told you before. Why would God still pursue the prophet who is running away from his mission? Jonah. Out of how many people that are summer in mountains are praying that God please use me, God keeps on pursuing one man. It's because of the investment, how much time God would have spent developing the man. He could have given the same message to a different person. And he was just going to go and deliver the message. But, you know, God had developed him well to a point where now he is, he is the only one qualified to carry that message. So he keeps on pursuing him everywhere, even under the water. He keeps on pursuing. Because he has invested a lot in developing this man. Character, character, character. Character, character, mm. character, pastors, is the key. And the reason why we don't seem to pay a lot of attention on character development is because you really get people gather around a developed character. Yes, people always gather around a developed gift. Character at work, they don't admire. But the gift at work, they are drawn by the fire that burns. You remember Proverbs 22, verse 1. Proverbs 22, verse 1. Proverbs 22, verse 1, Father. A good name is rather, is rather to be chosen than great riches. When a chance is given one of these days to you to choose, the advice from the man of wisdom is, Rather choose a good name than what? Great riches. The riches are so great, yet the name is good. But go for the good name mm. rather than riches that are so great. Mm. This is in terms of their appearance. They seem to be greater than the name that is good. Mm. Mm. You know, great is greater than good. <laughs> but he says you rather choose a good name than great riches but how do you choose a good name do you find it already good and then you choose it Choosing a good name is not a good name that you choose. You choose to make your name good. It is the choice that you make to focus and to develop and to improve the name that you have. It's not a good name that you choose. You choose to make it good. 
when the name has now become good, it is the character that you have worked on. It's rather to be chosen than great riches, but how many people have you seen mm. <laughs> fighting so hard and spending most of their time trying to develop and improve their name? No. Especially if you have two options, great riches and good name, you go for money. You go for money. The reason why we go for money is because after you have chosen money, it's something that people look at and they admire you for having it. And the reason also why even our children would not go for the good name, it is because most of the people that they have watched celebrated in the world, it was because of they are great riches, not good name. So celebrating failures, celebrating wrong people, has diverted their interest. Now they're no longer interested in a good name. But having a good name is having a good character. Now, Notice while the fire was burning in the bush. And I said the bush was a physical structure that was on the earth. And the angel of God had to make use of a physical body to express himself. So he's burning from the bush. And because after the uh, visitation was over and the angel of God lifted from the bush. No leaf was missing. Okay. I said, then the bush cannot take credit. The bush cannot say this was my fire if it wasn't burnt. And the miracle, if, if we are to say thank you to the bush, the only work that the bush did there was not to become part of what God was doing and not contaminate the fire. The bush did its own work very well, not contaminating God's fire. That is why the sight was so great. You know, when God's power comes when, and God gives you the grace to even cleanse the lepers. That power from God is sufficient. It is more than enough to heal and to cure the sick. From God, it comes to you adequate. He cannot ask you to go cleanse the lepers and raise the dead when the power to do so has not been provided adequately. He makes sure you have enough of it to cleanse the lepers. So when you leave the presence of God, having been sent by God to go and cleanse the lepers, and then you go and you touch the lepers and they're not cleansed. What is happening now is the contamination of the fire. Mm. Mm. Being able to deliver the fire of God, you know, the more, the longer the distance, the electricity travels. There is a voltage drop. 
power drops. Yes, okay. Yes, this is why you would put transformers every time. The more you travel away from the generator that generates the power, you start losing power along the way. Yes, so when we fail to heal the sick, it is never God failing. It is never God failing. So many things happen. The power of God before it, it is released from me, it interacts with so many things. Okay? Mm. Mm. There is a lot of things happening in a man of God before the power is released. Mm. And it is never the same amount that he got from God. Especially when the leaves are getting bent in the process. And the power now goes to the recipient with some of my ingredients. Mm -hmm. When my character now accompanies the fire of God. Uh, notice what God did. He then spoke from the fire and he said to Moses, take off your shoes for the place where you are standing is holy. The ground is holy. And he said, draw not nigh hither. Mm. Put off thy shoes from off thy feet. For the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. Okay. Notice before God sent him to deliver the people of Israel. God made Moses to remove and to lose some. There are certain losses in the kingdom of God that you incur that will result in profit. God asking him to remove his shoes. It was not so that he loses his shoes. It was so that he exposes a certain part of himself that was covered by the shoes. He's not asking you to remove so that you lose. He's asking you to remove so that you expose. That's deep. God never wanted any insulation between Moses the man and the ground that was holy. Get in touch with the ground. Let's remove something. Let's not have a soul. Let's not have any rubber between you and the ground that is holy. For us to create that contact, you have to remove your shoes. Remove your shoes. The ground is holy. Mm. I dealt with this before. If the ground is holy, the only reason why we put on shoes is for safety. Safety, there is, there is danger. The ground is hot and there are thorns. And all that was as a result of God having placed a curse on the ground mm. because of sin. So you have to put on shoes because they are thorns. And thorns came out as a result of a curse. The ground received a curse. That's why thorns are coming out and that's the reason why we put on shoes. Without a curse, you are not supposed to be putting on shoes. And God is saying to Moses, that ground where you're standing has been exempted from that curse. So you can't keep on putting on 
security systems around you. That ground is now holy, so remove everything that you think is protecting you, remove it. Mm. Because of the ground where you are standing. Mm. God will ask you to get rid of certain mechanisms before you are in touch with his holiness. Character is who you are. Character, the character you have is what has brought you to where you are. Those are the shoes that you've been putting on. Put off your history. That's what God is saying to Moses. Mm. Put off your history. Look at the footsteps, where he's coming from. Yes. Put off that. Put off that. Put off that. You know, it's so easy for God to give you a gift. When you ask God for gifts, do you know he has people that he has actually given gifts to just because he wanted to get rid of them? When God realizes that you are <laughs> disturbing him, he gives you a gift and he knows that most of you are not aware that he is not his gift. Because you don't know that he is different from his gift. When you get a gift from him, you walk away and then God will have his peace. You, you don't know who God is. That is why we follow gifts. We follow gifts because we, we, we don't know who he is. So when you keep bothering, that's why most people are gifted. Yet not many of them have the giver of the gift. God is so quick in giving people gifts, but he takes his time before he gives himself. Mm. Mm. Can I give you a scripture that supports please. that? Please. John chapter 2, verse number 23. John 2 verse 23. Now when he was in Jerusalem. This is Jesus in Jerusalem. You know what? At the Passover. Yes. In the feast day. Many believed in his name. What did they do? They believed. In what? In his name. And this is the reason why they believed in his name. When they saw the miracles which he did. For them to believe in his name, what he did was to perform miracle. Mm -hmm. And they believed yeah. in his name because of the miracles that he performed. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. but, but there is a but. Mm -hmm. Jesus did not commit himself unto them mm -hmm. because he knew all men. Jesus then did not commit. Now, explain to me what is happening here. You have many that have believed in his name. Mm -hmm. Then he refused to commit himself mm -hmm. unto them even after they had believed in his name, because he knows all men. Mm. What did he knew about the men that believed in him? Mm. To a point where he says, yes, they qualify for the miracles, but they don't qualify for me. So I'm supporting 
this spiritual idea that it's so easy for God to give you a gift, but it is for him to give himself to you. Because in giving himself to you, what he has given to you is character. Mm, mm. when it is now God that you have, what you have is a God character. You see, God is not found in too many places. Uh, what do you mean, Father? <laughs> Explain it, Father. <laughs> do you know if Moses had our theology, even after God had said, I will not go with you, Moses would have said, he's an, an omnipresent God. God. <laughs> I will just go. <laughs> there is something that he knows that we don't know about this God. Where would a God who is omnipresent say, I will not go with you? And then he begged him, he said, if you're not going with us, then we're not leaving this place. Mm -hmm. But remember the last teaching I did last time? He said, I will give you an angel that will go with you. But I'm not there. Mm, okay. So he's in that business of giving you something else. Mm. Especially if you don't know who he is. Something that looks just like him. He's so quick. People, most of them right now praying and fasting, what they are asking God for is not God. Hey, that's powerful, Father. So, God then, at the end of the day, he realizes if I'm to find my peace, I will have to hand over to these people gifts. How is it that they believed in his name and then he still did not commit himself? He did not hand himself over to them because he knew he knew. Hmm. Pastors, look at this. Just look at this. It's quite an interesting thing here. <laughs> he has given out miracles. People have recovered. Demons have been cast out. But that wasn't himself. He has something else that is not himself that he gives out to people. What is that? Hmm? So imagine in the case where people are being healed in the church. Prophecies are being given in the church. And yet all those are not him. How is it a man can cast out devils in his name? How is it that a man can heal the sick in his name? And the owner of the name finally comes and he says, you are a worker of iniquity. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. Mm. The miracles that were being performed, a man was working iniquity in the, in the church. It was iniquity being worked out in the name. Mm, mm, mm. In the name. Ha! Ah, explain, explain that to me. Explain that to me. In the, you work iniquity. By the name. We cast out demons in your name. And I will say unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me. Ah, oh, we need to find that scripture. Indeed, Father. Matthew 7, verse 22. Okay. Many will say to How many? Many. 
is around few. So these many are already at work. Many. Many. This is why discernment is needed. To think that there are many. Just wake up in the morning knowing there are many. With this ability that is about to be described now. Many. It's not anything that is scarce. Many. Because many have been praying and seeking for this. And they got it. Many. Many will say to me, mm. in that day, mm. Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? So they did what? Prophesied. Prophesy. Mm. In whose name? In his name. So these people had no demons giving them information. They were not getting information from the moon or from the star. Mm. They were prophesying in his name. Hence, even the gods to tell him, mm. did we not mm. using your name? Mm. Until the only way you can interpret and understand this is when you separate gifts from himself. himself. <laughs> People that are gifted are not just deceiving their participants or their spectators. They are also deceived by their own gifts. They are deceived by their own gifts. They stopped discerning the presence of God because they thought God was the gift. Many, yes? Many will we'll say, say to me in that day, Lord, yeah. Lord, mm -hmm. have we not prophesied in thy name? Mm -hmm. And in thy name have cast out devils. Which means demons actually came out. Mm -hmm. We cast them out. Mm -hmm. Demons were coming out. Yes. And in thy name done many wonderful works. The works were what? Wonderful. They are calling those works wonderful. We'll wait and see whether God confirms whether the work was a wonderful work. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And then will I profess unto them. Yes. I never knew you. Now, to think that a man that God doesn't know can still attain acquire, receive a gift. We never had a relationship. There was no introductions. We never got to know each other. You came for a gift, for an ability to prophesy. I gave to you that part and that part wasn't myself. The only way you can know that it is God that you have is when you have his character. Oh. It's amazing how we have it in scripture. Mm -hmm. In black and white. You have just read it many there's quite a lot that are able to cast out devils mm. using the name of Jesus. Mm. Prophesy using the name of Jesus. Do many wonderful works using the name of Jesus. And he says, I never knew you. Mm. How did we get to that point where you gave us gifts? Yes. To think that it, it can happen in this kingdom that Gifts can be distributed so generously. And registered individuals who are not even known can start walking around and doing signs and wonders. Because mm. God himself is not what he gives. When it is now himself that he has given, how do you know now it's beyond a gift? I now have the God, the giver of the gifts. Character. Character. Character is what betrays his presence in your life. You know it's not a gift from God. Mm. It is God himself who has given himself as a gift. Character. Character. I'm giving you scripture after scripture. Indeed. At one point, what he gave to them were miracles, but he did not commit himself unto them. 
So what they got was miracles from Jesus and never Jesus. They don't have him, yet they believed in him. He knew, he discerned something was wrong with these people. And they deserve a miracle, not me. So it was a miracle he gave to them. You see, when a man of God is developed and is mature, he gets to a point where the Bible says, by a prophet, Israel was delivered. And by a prophet, she was preserved. At that point, it is no longer the prophecy that the prophet is giving. Okay, it is the presence of the man, the prophet. You have a prophet who is no longer prophesying. And then your deliverance starts from there. Your preservation starts from there. When the <laughs> healer of the sick is no longer healing the sick, mm. when the prophet is no longer prophesying, it wasn't by prophecy, it was by the prophet. Mm. Mm. When it is now by the prophet, it is by the character. <laughs> 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 yeah? And by a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. By a prophecy. By a prophet. By a prophecy. By a prophet. Now, when God brings out Israel, the entire nation is now getting delivered on the basis of a character, not prophecy. By a prophet. Yes. And by, by a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. Mm. And by a prophet was he preserved. So, I want people to understand. It must get to a point where you look at a man, his presence. His presence. Not what he's doing, his presence. His presence. You say, what I need from him is not even a prophecy. Because having him, it means he has committed himself. Wow. I have him. And he's not giving me what he has. He has given me himself. It is him that I now have. If it's now Jesus that you have. <laughs> Why we give you prophecies? Because that's what they qualified for. Jesus gave them miracles. But then when it comes to himself, he said, I will not commit myself to them because I know them which means he's more special than the miracles that he performed. Yes, yes. He's greater than the power that he released. He said, I have to spare myself. From, they can't handle me. They can't carry me. So he kept himself away from them because he knew their hearts. They're here for something else. Not many are coming to Jesus for Jesus. Look at John chapter 1. Look at John chapter 1. This is John speaking. Verse number 35. Again, the, Again, next, day, the next day, after John stood, mm. and two of his disciples. Who is standing there? John. John. And? Two of his disciples. Yes. Two of his. Whose disciples? John. John's his disciples. disciples. Yes. And looking upon Jesus as he walked. This is John now looking upon Jesus as Jesus was walking. Mm. Yes. He saith, behold, mm. the Lamb of God. Underline the word behold. If you can, please mm. take note of the word behold. This is John having seen Jesus and knowing that not many in this place are able to recognize him. So he's trying to bring their focus to the most important figure. Behold, look, focus on the lamp of God. And the two disciples heard him speak. When the two, two of his disciples heard 
what they did was to hear John speak. Mm. So the announcement that Jesus was the Lamb of God had to be spoken for the man to behold and they had their master declaring that that's the Lamb of God. And when they had, what happened next? And they followed Jesus. After hearing, what they did was to follow. They had and they followed Jesus. They had John and they followed Jesus. They had John. They did not follow John. They had John and they followed Jesus. Because the message that John preached was, Behold, he gave his people something better to follow. Better, even better than himself. And when they had properly, they followed Jesus. Now, at that point, there's a separate message, a good one. And there is an ugly message that follows after that. Okay. I want to help you understand something here. Yes. If John had, for example, if he had 20 disciples, <laughs> and then only two of his disciples left him, and they followed Jesus. It means now John is left with 18 disciples. But in as far as God measures success in his kingdom, do you know the only disciples that you have properly developed as a master is the few that you would have lost to Jesus. That's powerful. That's powerful. Okay. That's powerful. The ones that remain with you after you have taught them to behold the Lamb of God. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm talking about trying to maintain your membership. There will come a time when the number of people that you have helped spiritually are only those that have left you and followed him. Mm. Come again, Father. Hey, hey, hey. How many people do you have? How many members do you have? The ones that you have lost to Jesus. Not the ones that remained with you. <laughs> I, I need people to follow to, to hear this. That message was the most powerful message that John preached. Because he lost two of his disciples. And the ones that he lost are the only disciples that he has. Mm. 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 Why compete with Jesus? These are his people. In fact, if you are following Jesus and the people that are following you are following Jesus and you lose them, where are you? If you feel like you've lost... That's a strong question. <laughs> yeah. If you feel like you've lost your disciples, they have gone to be with the Lord. Right. <laughs> <laughs> what makes you think they've left you if you are with Jesus? Mm -hmm. It means you are wrongly placed. You are not where you belong. Mm. If you yourself are with Jesus, if you are with Jesus and you have people following you, there's no way that they are ever going to walk away from you. Mm -hmm. e. God is going to reward people based on this equation that I've presented. Mm -hmm. God will look at how many did you lose to me? Because those are the ones that you successfully mentored. Wow. 
being able to release people to their honor, to their creator. Because mm. God has a better character than you have. Hey. He can take care of them. What can you do with people? What can you do with people, honestly, even if you say, I want all of them to surround, what can you do with them? Where, where, where do you put them? No way. No way. <laughs> <laughs> the day you start losing members to Jesus, that's the day ministry starts. Helping them to behold. The day you deliver, when members are fully delivered, is when, when <laughs> Jesus now becomes their focus. Mm. You, when you identify, you are the first one as a man of God. You are privileged to see him as he walks and you have a revelation that this is the Lamb of God. And that's the message that you declare to your members. Behold the Lamb of God. Blessed are those that are going to walk away from you and follow him. You know, those ones, they've arrived. They've arrived. You have to wash your hands and say, I have delivered two so far. They've arrived. But we are not ready for that kind of a message because we want all of them to come. Yet we have nothing to give. Sooner or later, they're going to discover that we don't have the character they assume that we have. Mm. We don't have. Now, we have the disciples of John following Jesus. Let's see if they are going to complete the process mm. without making mistakes that most people have watched them make. Mm. First stage, when the right message is preached by your man of God and he hands you over to the Lamb of God and now it is the Lamb of God that you follow. You follow John and he leads you to Christ. How can they believe unless there is a preacher? How can they even preach unless they are called? So you need the preacher who hands you over to the Lord. Now, he has done his part very well. Let's look at the members. Even after the right message has been preached, you have handed them over to the Lord. Mm. Now, his message was, behold what? The Lamb of God. So look at the Lamb of God. Focus on the Lamb of God. Make him your pivot. He has to become your vision. It's him that you see. That's the greatest vision. Of all the visions, you can see beasts coming out of the water. The greatest vision. That is why it is the revelation of Jesus. The book of Revelation. It is the revelation of Jesus. And yet he saw beasts, he saw a woman, he saw all sorts of things. Lightnings were there. But John maintains that it is the revelation of Jesus Christ at the beginning of that book. Mm. Jesus has to become your greatest visions if you are a man of visions, mm. if you believe in visions as a mm. prophet. The greatest that you can ever see mm. in the spiritual world is Jesus. He's the greatest of, of all the visions. There's no picture that surpasses him. So he, so this John now, John the Baptist here, is now saying, behold the Lamb of God. Now two of his disciples have gone, yes? And, and the two followed. disciples heard him speak mm. and they followed Jesus. They followed who? Jesus. They followed who? Jesus. Uh-huh. Then Jesus turned and... Then Jesus, as they were following him, Jesus turned. Notice, Jesus turned. Mm. Uh -huh. and saw them following. And he saw them, indeed, these guys are following me. Mm. The same way that we follow him. Mm. He turns sometimes and he sees us following him. Mm. Here comes the question. Mm. Uh -huh. And saith unto them, what seek ye? We are going somewhere. <laughs> 
What seek ye? Because he knows not all of his followers are following him because it is him they love. Why would he ask such a question? Having seen them following him, he turned and is asking them, I know you're seeking for something. Tell me the name. What is it that you're seeking for? You may think there is something wrong with that question. You will soon find out that in as much as they were following him, it wasn't Jesus that they wanted to see. It was something of Jesus. A house. <laughs> they said unto him, Rabbi, which is to say, being interpreted, Master, mm -hmm. where dwellest thou? And Jesus said, what? Come. He said unto them, come and see. That's what you will see. To think that the message, my God. John said, make him your focus. Behold the lamp of God. And when they followed the lamp of God, the lamp of God looked at them and the lamp asked them, what are you seeking? And they said, your habitation, your house. And the lamp that they were supposed to be focusing on then said to them, come and see. So what they are now coming to see is no longer the lamp. They're coming to see a house. That's where we have billions of Christians, right there. He did not even rebuke them. Why would you follow me for a car? He did not even rebuke them. Why, why would you follow me for a suit? Why would you follow me for money? He says, come and see. And you see that. And many Christians are seeing houses. Wow. Look at how Jesus treats us. He asks you, is it me that you want to see? And they went on to say, your house. <laughs> <laughs> the message was, behold, not the house, but the lamp. And when they followed the lamp, the lamp did its own investigations to see because he knows not all of these people following me are following me. They are following me because of what I can give. Following me because of gifts. <sighs> oh my God. Eish. It's easy for him to give you a gift. But when he has given himself, you now have the God character. God character. When you have the God character, even if you don't seem to be gifted, no one invites you for a conference because you have a good character. Mm. Mm -hmm. oh, they don't put posters that say we have this man is going to come and exhibit character. No. And yet it is character that sustains you. Wow. So, most people don't realize that you can, with the character, still heal, still deliver, still preserve. Is the ultimate. Gifts are inferior to God's character. Like the example that I've given you by a prophet. Not prophecy. Yes. So. It's not easy. I understand. Because not many people around you are focusing on character development. It's not easy. It's not easy. Pastors, when it is now God that you have received, and not just receiving from God, 
<laughs> that statement is so pregnant. Indeed, Father. Receiving God and not from receiving from God. Yeah. Where you have the majority of believers, that's where they are. You think they are following him. Wait until the Lamb of God asks them, what are you seeking? Yet the message by John was so clear, make him your focus. Behold, the house, the Lamb. And God did not send them to hell because they wanted to see his house. He said, come and see. But that's not the greatest division. Okay? So, when you make him your focus, the way I see personally in the spirit, prophetically, do you know when you see him, you start seeing what he's seeing. Seeing by him. Seeing by him, hearing by him. <laughs> there are not too many things to see in the spirit. He defines everything else. If it is him that you focus on, you end up seeing everything else. If you see everything else without him, everything else doesn't have any definition. Meanings of things. Jesus is the meaning. He's the answer. I'm saying it's not easy focusing on that because you might not really be celebrated for having a godly character. We are celebrated for having a godly gift. Oh. Mm. Mm -hmm. So, what do you do? You need to have a revelation first. Understand the intensity, the weight that is contained within the character of God. It's the revelation first that you need to have, knowing the value of the gift versus the value of the character. So that you know what to choose. Name, a good name rather, yes. is to be chosen than great riches. Now, when you now have a sufficient revelation knowing what is contained within the God character, you then make that your focus. You start spending most of your days on character development than on gift development. There is God that you have. It's not something from God that you have. It's God that you now have. Now, when it is now God that you have, your weight in the spirit increases. Your presence broadens. Your presence. Mm. <laughs> Your circumference, the space that you occupy in the spirit is enlarged. When God comes to sit on you, not a gift. When he's giving you a gift, he's sending him. A gift is a messenger. Like God is not interested in talking to you and then he's sending an angel. That's... that's when it is him, when he comes to sit on you mm. and you become his house that accommodates him, you start practicing the character of God when things are being said, when things are being done. You will be quick to understand matters and sometimes slow to respond. That's God. Okay. You know it's not just a gift. 
is the God that I now have. You see things, you know. When you start seeing things, proof that you're seeing things is not when you say them every time. Look at how God deals with his people. How many times we've offended him and he keeps quiet as if he's not even aware. Mm. So when a husband has fully developed himself and is working on the God character, the wife will know. The wife will know that my man here, I've really offended him. He's just not angry. I will not go by his response. Just because he's not accusing me, it doesn't mean that I, I'm not at fault. He's exhibiting the God character. When you are developed in that character, you are not quick to come up with... <laughs> new discoveries every time. Hmm. When people are lying to you and you say you're lying, when people are stealing, you say you're stealing from me. No, 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 no. The same way, look at, I've, I've told you, how many things we have stolen from him, yet he's quiet, as if he's not aware. This idea of trying to find faults, mistakes, and you want people around you to always know that you, you are aware, you are yet to develop a God character. When the character is developed, you start exercising patience with people around you. That's how you know it's not just a gift from God. God has given himself to you as a gift. You take it easy with people around you. They are given enough space even to make mistakes. Condemnation is minimized. It's even at zero. There is conviction. And people around you, they get comforted they feel, just by coming into your presence without any confession, they feel forgiven. It's not something that we can teach in Bible schools, okay? <laughs> but they will feel as though they are coming from God, coming from you. They feel like their omissions, their mistakes have been overlooked by God when it was you overlooking their mistakes. When that character of God is developed, they know they are sinners, but they still want to be close to you. Because they feel that's where we have our hope. When there is a character of God on a person, <laughs> you can be Accusing your partner, finding fault. Everything is wrong. Everything she says is wrong. Everything she does is wrong. Everything. No. You take it easy. Look at how we get born again and we start learning how to pray. And God is listening. He's not laughing at our little efforts. So when you've matured in terms of character, your children will know. Your husband will know that there is a character of God in this. And when finally you step right in front of the gate and you want to enter into the kingdom of God or into heaven as a place, it's not the gift that God is going to look at. It's himself in you. Wow. Mm, mm, mm. 
how much of me did you receive? Did I transform your character? Was you changed, transformed into my image, into my full stature? Were you responding to matters of life according to my character? Character. Do you have that character that I can trust you, even with my time, can I trust you with my money? Do you know a man with character? A man with a godly character. You can't even keep people for four hours in a church service. Knowing that you are not known by God. It takes character. It takes character. Do you know there are people who qualify to be in ministry? And what qualifies them to be in ministry is the fact that they didn't start a ministry. Being fair with themselves. Mm -hmm knowing that they are not even ready to follow themselves, mm. then they don't start a ministry. They say, okay. Being that honest, mm. you know the character is being developed. Mm. I would rather follow than being followed. I don't have what it takes to shepherd a soul. A spirit is a complicated creature. Not easy to govern. And you become so honest. And the people close to you are the first ones actually to know that this man, God is Manifesting through him. Are you a man of your word? Do they believe what you're saying? Do they believe what you're saying? You see, if you are following a man, for instance, you should never, like some of the dangerous prayers that people do, where before they get to know the men of God that they are following, they go on to pray to God for the same grace to come upon their lives. Mm -hmm. I want the anointing that my father has. I want the anointing that the prophet has. I want the grace that the prophet has. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big mistake, of course. It's a, it's a <laughs> ah. Sometimes you, you, you will be disappointed the day you realize that he is also asking God for the same grace. The man of God himself is also asking God, believing God for the same anointing. Mm. He's hoping that he would receive it because it's not yet there. I want you people to follow this. I've said it before. Like, if whatever is being done. You remember I've been, I've been giving you extra lessons away from people. How expensive it is maintaining a lie. You remember me telling you that until God starts healing people, keep laying your hands on them. Keep on laying your hands on the sick until God comes in to say, okay, I see my, my son, you have really <laughs> suffered. Let me start healing the people. Right. <laughs> Don't short-circuit that process. Thank you. 
don't make it up. Don't, don't. It's so expensive having one person alive. Right. <laughs> <laughs> who became, who was part of a drama that you acted out. Maintaining that one person, it's so expensive. Mm. Don't, 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 don't go there. Don't make that mistake. If you pray for somebody who is sick and the following day, the man is dead, let the people know. He got worse after praying for him. Mm. You're developing a godly character. The ones that recovered, it was God. The ones that died, it was me. Mm -hmm. He got choked by my leaves that, that, that were burning. Mm -hmm. It was my character. Mm -hmm. Tell your people, as a prophet, it's not everything that I see. How many times have I told you? So many, so many, times. So many times. No prophet sees everything. They have to know that. Just in case they become careless with their lives, thinking my father is seeing me in the spirit. I'm not seeing everything. That takes character now. That takes character. When you are faking things, everything about you is a lie. I don't know Maybe we are different in the way that you have been brought up. Personally, I didn't grow up around manifestations of gifts where my parents were extremely charismatic. I'm a product of character. I was seeing the nature of God being displayed growing up. So that became my focus to say I want to be a man of God, first and foremost. I want to be born again, and I want to be a man of God. I want to make sure in everything that I do, God is present. I have to have God, and I'm sure about that. So I'm not deceived by everything else that I see, everything else that I do, no. There has to be God. So that was my focus, seeing how they were relating with other people in the community. I looked at how many people, my, my biological father, managed to bring up men and women. Some that came, there were little girls, young girls that came. They would serve, they would work under my mother for years until they got married. To think a person can come and can work for more than 20 years until they are married. Hmm. Hmm. And That's the man who comes to marry that girl will come and bring a gift and thank my father to say, you are not the father to mm. this daughter, mm. but you looked after her. Mm. She was an orphan mm. and they are still virgins. Mm. That aspect in itself, mm. it's not prophetic in nature. Right. There's no healing of the sick, but that's the character of God. Can you be entrusted with a young girl? She stays in your house and she goes out untouched. That's God now, not a gift. That's God. When you are gifted, you lure people and then you exploit them. Because there's no character now. There's no character. Can I trust you with my daughter? That's the question. I would rather find a man of God who has developed his character, no spiritual gift. And I would rather hand over my daughter to him and say, look after her mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for me, please. Mm -hmm. I know she'll be kept very well by the character of God mm -hmm. than by the gift. Mm -hmm. Most gifted men of God are dangerous. Dangerous. Because they are charismatic, they change in colors. They change their complexion like a python. And they lure you. As you focus on the gift, something else terrible is happening to you. 
If a man is a liar and you know he's a liar, whether even you pastors following me, if you know, you continue following me after knowing that I lie. No, <laughs> you have no idea what you've done to yourselves. You have no idea. How can I lie of testimonies that you guys know that you, you cooked? <laughs> Why, why are you wasting your time? <laughs> <laughs> what is your wife saying, knowing that you belong to that department? What, what a church. What a church. Character. 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 I don't know how, how can I, if I say, okay, if I'm telling you pastors that I have, let's say we are in a church setup and I'm preaching and I'm telling you that I have businesses that I run. And as my pastors, you have no access to those businesses. You have never seen them. And I'm saying I have a business and I have no business. <laughs> you know, the way that I've been brought up myself personally, it's not just that I, I fear God. The, the respect that I even have for my wife, to think that I can say that I have a business and I look at her, can that business be so secret that she doesn't know? <laughs> if I know, she knows. I don't have it. And I'm saying that in her presence. Where is the shame? Where is the remorse? If I'm hurt by my own children saying that, and they've never been to any of my businesses, to think that I, and now I, they know that I'm a liar, just to think of that, I can't cope with that. Before I say whatever I, I need to say, I consider the character in me considers people that are important around me. Mm. Mm. Thank you, Father. Why should I not give you access? If I have money, if I'm making even $100 a day, why should I not give you access? So that I'm not just teaching you by what I'm saying, I give you access to what I'm doing. So if I'm a liar, like those apostles last Sunday, <laughs> yes, what else is true? Right, right. What else is true? Nothing. Nothing. So even the God that the man claims to have is not even there, probably. Hmm. So practical. So practical. Character. When you start developing character, you start, there are things that you say, I can't do this. I, I, I can't do this. I've asked you this question before, pastors. In terms of character, because we're dealing with so many issues here. In terms of character, I'm saying, there is a person in the church. You pastors, you are good looking, so handsome. And there's a girl in the church you are in love with that girl and you are ministering. How? Does it? When you look at that section where she, she is seated and you say, let's, let's open, <laughs> let's read from the book of John chapter 1. It doesn't. <laughs> Teach me something. Teach me something. You know, <laughs> she's there. What is she thinking? What is happening? When your wife holds a microphone and she's saying, my husband, and there are 10 women 
in that same church that knows the same man. And they call her mama. Mm. Mom in what sense? Mm. If members can sleep with your men and still keep coming to church mm. and still call you mother, what is it even with those members mm. in terms of their character? Mm. How can people be so wicked? They allow you to call him my husband, yet all of, all of them, they know the guy. Mm. Mm. What a shame. Why expose your wife to that kind of humiliation? Yeah. Mm. You can only do that if you're gifted. Mm. Not when God is your gift. You can't. You can't. You see, most men of God that have watched on the internet, that have come out to confess yes. before their members, yes. crying. But I, I didn't walk properly. I've watched some of those churches like in America where they come up and they confess. Yes. I've seen preachers. Huh? Yes. There was a video of the evangelist Jim Swaggart, a great man of God, who came out and he was weeping before members and he said, I sinned, please forgive me. From that day, his ministry never took off. They are now avoiding a man who has confessed. He is now more righteous than the man who is never going to confess. That's the problem with people. <laughs> to think he came to his own people. And what it leaked in those days was just a picture. He came to say, please forgive me. Not if that was my picture. Say <laughs> so all those pictures are fake. Right. They are doctored. <laughs> Even a video. <laughs> <laughs> what does it mean? What does it mean? <laughs> <laughs> it is you there. <laughs> That's your face. Character. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Yet the man who comes out to say, please, I'm sorry, I was wrong here. He's now better. You now know him. Mm. At least he can cry. Mm. To even have a man who can even cry. Mm. What a great man. What a man of God. Not the types that we see nowadays so hardened. Oh. <laughs> so, how do I know I'm Proving I'm developing on my character. When the character of God rests on you, it calms you down. I'm finishing with that. You take it easy with people. Take it easy with yourself. Okay? So, you don't, don't make a lot of noise. No? Don't, don't make a lot of noise. Don't, don't, don't talk too much. That's not God's character. God is not talkative. He talks. Mm -hmm. Oh, blah, 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 blah. There's no character there. When the character of God comes upon you, it makes you steady. So when you are descending, trying to find a man of God that is worth following, look for men of God that are decent. Okay? Steady. Steady. The 
glucose level has to be low. <laughs> yes, glucose. <laughs> you see, power is not in noise. Power is mm. never in noise. Mm. If power was in noise, then motorbikes would have taken over the cargo industry. <laughs> <laughs> We're never going to need <laughs> 30 tonner trucks yes, and, uh, <laughs> and ships. Motorbikes from here, <laughs> 10 kilometers away. <laughs> you hear it. But let's look at the luggage. Mm. How much are you carrying making all that noise? Mm. Power is never. Wow in those decibels. No. God's character, how do you know? It makes me lie down. Wow. It makes you lie down. Mm -hmm. The good shepherd makes you lie down. Mm -hmm. Man of God who tells you, I have everything that you're looking for. Come to me. <laughs> Don't go there. If God was present, he wouldn't have said what he just said. Mm. That's not true. Yet you can have a man of God who has a character and he tells you, go back to your church. Your pastor is going to help you. And then sometimes you make a mistake of leaving such a man who tells you to go back to your past. <laughs> <laughs> because God's character is so calm. The man has been laid down by the good shepherd. By now you know when you're approaching where God's power is, There is serenity. There is peace, quietness. You know we are going somewhere. You know it. I don't have to keep on telling you that I have it. What I have is God. What I have is God. And you know, having studied money by now, that the people look at all, I've given this as an example, look at all of the billionaires, billionaires that you know, billionaires yes. that you know, except a few, unless maybe if they are blacks, just a few. <laughs> Steady. Very. Steady. Mm. What is it that tells you money has a certain character? How do you know that that's where money is? The money character, you see it. Why is it that most, I can say 99% of all the billionaires, 99%, they don't show off. Why? Why? Talk to me, pastors, why? How much is their shit? <laughs> How much is their shit? Quite a lot. Quite a lot. But have you seen the price tag? No. Where is that coming from? The impartation, they got the impartation from the money. When now money is present, <laughs> there's no noise. Mm. How do I know there's no money? Noise. <laughs> noise. If there's too much noise, there's no money. The day you gather enough of it, it makes you lie down. Those guys are even afraid of their lives. Mm -hmm. It's other people making calculations and saying now he's worth so much. Not them doing that. Mm -hmm. 
I hope you are following this. So how do I know I now have money when the character of money comes upon you? How do I know I now have God character when God's character is upon you? To think God has given us all these churches that we are pastoring now, that's his church. He allows us to go ahead and preach. He doesn't come there to say, let me take over my church and I want to talk to my people. He's quiet. He allows us to talk steady. So reserved. I, li I like him. <laughs> <laughs> Give it your own name. But it's, but it's mine. He's not threatened by us. He's not threatened by us. I like that. That's, that's good character. <laughs> you see, so take it easy with people around. They must feel comfortable. People around you must not always be terrified. No. That's not, the anointing. That's not how the anointing of God works. <laughs> with what we've seen God do uh, over the years, some of us were not supposed even to be laughing here. Father. <laughs> <laughs> I could have come here with a robe. <laughs> yes, <laughs> you see but God doesn't operate like that people must come when they feel like they want to come they must leave when it is time for them to leave which is very 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 important develop a good character more than just a gift from God. Thank you, Father. Seek for him. Look for him. Behold him until he becomes what you have and everything else. Everything else. You see it falling into place. Everything else. Everything else. Another sign that you know that the character of God has fully developed in me. The wisdom that you exhibit when it comes to matters of life, that person might not be able to raise his hand and you see things are happening. Maybe water is turned into wine or something like that. He becomes a man of wisdom. The character of God brings out wisdom. 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 Good character. And someone came to see me and uh, we were talking. After a while, he, I think he felt like he wanted to visit the restroom. Then I knew from the beginning that he was recording with his phone. You have come into my house. You want me to help you. You are recording me without my consent. Then when he went to the restroom, he left his phone. Then I spoke to the phone. I said, I don't like this. <laughs> Let's make sure you delete it. <laughs> I don't like this. Because I'd seen that this is a wrong character. You should have asked me. You should have told me. Maybe he values my voice. I understand that. But probably I'm going to give my personal examples, what I've gone through personally with you in confidence. Mm. Maybe you record and then you lose the recording. Mm. Now I'm telling everyone, people that I don't even trust. Mm. So I told the phone, I knew he was going to play it when he gets home. <laughs> so, so he had that part when he got home. <laughs> <laughs> Character. Character. 
character. Character, character, character. Hmm? If you ever open the picture on your phone and you show somebody, and then he starts scrolling and he's looking at other pictures. <laughs> <laughs> All that is coming from character. Character. People always want to know. You know, they have got messages in their own phones that they, are, they haven't read. But they want to look at your <laughs> messages in your phone. <laughs> Our backgrounds are so... Uh, so they have damaged us a lot. And most of us, I know, we are trying to recover from those. Try by all means. I want to, even if I'm going to be kept, if I'm going to be looked after by anybody, they must feel like they have God in their house. I want to exhibit a God character. At your workplace, your bosses must know. But no, 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 no. no. If, if there is anything missing, he can, he can never, this guy can never be any of our suspects. He can never be one of the suspects. He can't. That one can never. If you tried people in that area, don't trust them until you try them. Some behave well until money shows up. They change. If they are following you because they think you are the best, introduce the best to them and see if they continue following you. So please, Child of God, in whatever that you do in life, try by all means, make sure that your character is developed. Don't go by the exploits. Please, don't focus on the manifestation of gifts. After you have seen the gift, you have to look at the character. The character. The character. <laughs> There's a story I wanted to share with you. Yeah, maybe, maybe next time. <laughs> Father, share it with us. Please, Please, Please mother. Please do. Remind me next time. <laughs> Please do. Please do. It's so funny. <laughs> Please do. Please do. Share it with us, Father. <laughs> Please do. Please. Okay, let the people go. Please don't forget to pray for nations. Thank you. Don't forget. Don't forget. Let's keep on praying for nations. And I know God is in this and we, we know uh, we are going to come out clean. And we are coming good. Soon. So, so let's keep praying. Let's keep praying wherever you are. Just keep praying. 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 Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this grace that you've made available. You are helping us see yourself in us. We want to be transformed. We want to react. We want to respond the same way that you would have responded to matters, to situations. I want to tape into the correct answers that you would have given to the questions of life. I want to tape into your knowledge. I want to speak. When I speak, let it be you being heard by the people. Mm -hmm. I, I desire your character. You are the ultimate character. Instead of giving us everything you have, give yourself. It is you that we follow. It is you that we seek. Mm. It is you that we seek. And thank you so much, our Father, for making yourself available. And you have made yourself accessible. And we have you. And we are grateful to you for that. And bless your people. The people that are watching us today. Bless them. Increase them. Enlarge them. And enlarge their territories. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen and amen. So as you are dismissing the people, give them a chance to send their seed. It's offering time. It's offering time. Support God's work. What are you seeking? If it is him, support him. I like it that in Jesus' ministry, I keep on referring to that, to think that he had people partnering with him, giving him money, 
financing his ministry. And those people are still there today. Mm. They are not partnering with me. They are partnering with the Jesus that I have. Mm. And please go ahead and make sure every time you come, the same confidence that you have that you will see me coming every time, I should also have that same confidence in you that I will see you coming out every time to sow a seed. Send your seed right now. Support God's work. And the only disciple that you have lost to Jesus is the disciple that you have thoroughly discipled. The only money that you lose to him is the only money that you'll ever have. I repeat, there will come a time when the only thing that you'll have is that you which you have given to God. Mm -hmm. There are no losses. Give your disciple to Jesus mm -hmm. and you will have them. Give your money to God and you will have it. Invest in the kingdom of God. Many people, they think they're doing a lot. Some, I've dealt with a certain man who was so much happy. He was so excited. He believed that he was a giver. Until one day, I sat down with him and I started showing him how much he has spent on himself as compared to how much he has spent on the kingdom of God. And I said, you are yet to start partnering with God. It's okay if you spend much on yourself. It's okay, but I'm just saying, don't make it a big issue like you're making it now. It's as though God has taken most, taken most of your money. Mm -hmm. No, most of it, you have spent it on yourself. You see, invest in God. I'm not saying give more to God than you spend. I'm just saying, don't make it an issue. So I was just trying to cancel him because it was as if it's easy for him to buy a $300,000 car. But when he gives a thousand to God, it becomes an issue. Then such people, they need a correction. That's not how we, because your value for God is still questionable. Until you start investing in God's matters, then your life begins to matter. God will come in at a time when you least expect him. He will deliver you. You'll be so quick, you'll be so swift in delivering you from calamities. When you have made him and his work your priority. So go ahead and send your seed right now. You know how to send your seed. Without um, a trumpet being blown. Just these two minutes that I've explained to you the importance of sowing. Go ahead and send your seed to support God's work. We are preaching to thousands upon thousands of people because of you that have chosen to partner with God. And thank you so much for doing so. Thank you. If you know that you're partnering with this ministry, I thank you and I appreciate you. And I pray that God who created the heavens and the earth will see to it that wealth and finances, influence, blessings, money, connections, favor, they will gravitate towards you right now. In Jesus' mighty name. Be blessed even as you send your seed today. Be blessed. Be blessed. And be blessed. Thank you. Wow. Wow. Father, it's, it's been an amazing time. One of the questions that we've always had in ministry and probably we never really had somebody to answer the question. Can one be gifted in the absence of, of the giver of the gift? And Father, you have answered that question this morning. We have always wondered, what is it that is an indicator to us that can be seen upon a man that we can use to follow? and know that we have followed God in the process. Mm. That's something that we have always been thinking about, but 
to then identify that which qualifies a man to be followed mm. and God to be followed at the same time. Father, character. Mm. It's, it's really an amazing teaching that you've just given to us. You know, we have always looked at ministry and seen either gifts or possessions as an indicator of his presence mm. and qualified that. I think probably at, at some point we also need to understand what prosperity is all about. Mm. Because the disciples followed him and they were looking for a house and yet they were following him. Mm. And Jesus says, and the word says, he did not commit himself. Mm. And yet he had given them miracles. Yes. <laughs> And then you begin to understand that there is a dilemma somewhere that you have just probably brought to the fore and explained it well. Mm. Father, up to the point that we now know that one can be a work of iniquity mm. through the gift. Mm. Father, what more can I say? <laughs> <laughs> Character. Character. <Okay. laughs> Ah. Oh, that's quite something. Thank you so much, Father. No. Thank you. Um, Father, these are... We've, we've now learned, Father, that sometimes you, we can carry a question that seems so... seems as though there are answers that are available. Um, but you always bring redefinition and you shape the truth as it is. And you realize, had I Googled this matter, <laughs> you would never found it. Never. Oh. <laughs> to, to understand, listening to you, Father, describe, describing character, it's almost like a light bulb went on. Our Father is describing Jesus. Wow. Mm. That's it. It's, it's beautiful, Father. Wow. It's magnificent. Thank you so much. Wow. Thank you, Father. Wow. Thank you for continuing to partner with the, the work of the Lord. The details are on the screen. They've been flighting for some time now. Make use of them. They'll flight uh, soon after this broadcast and continue to partner with the work of the Lord. We're so grateful for this moment created by the Lord and our Father for sharing such wisdom and such light. Until we meet again next time. Shalom.